everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys four ways in which you can match into an internal medicine residency program in the US. Firstly, let's start with understanding the whole process. If you plan on applying for the match this year, the first step in the process would be to purchase an ERAS token. Now, ERAS token will be available around the month of June. And it's around that time that you'll get to know the entire timeline for, for the upcoming match season. So don't worry about all of those things for now because I'm going to make sure you, you guys don't miss any deadline. Okay, so don't worry about that. For now, just understand this whole process. So around June, you're going to be purchasing this ERAS token. And once you purchase that token, you will get access to an ERAS account. So this ERAS account is basically going to be your application. So in this application, what you're going to do is you're going to be filling your personal details, you're going to be filling in your CV your, and then your letters of recommendation will be uploaded on it. You'll have your MSP, personal statement, all of those things will come to your ERAS. Okay, we'll speak about all of this in a separate video. But for now, know that ERAS is basically the place where you have to fill everything and upload everything that's required for your residency application. So you have time from June to September to fill in all these details and choose which programs you want to apply to, get your letters, documents, everything. So within this period of time, you have to keep all of these things ready because in September, what's going to happen is programs will get access to your application. So on a particular date, like last year, it was on the 29th of September, programs were given access and they could start downloading all our applications. So now since programs have downloaded the application, they're just going to go through everything and see which candidates they want to start interviewing. So the time between September and Feb is when all the interviews are going to take place. By like the middle or the end of February, you will be able to start a ranking programs. Now, what does that mean? Let's say you got five interviews. Now, what you're supposed to do is log into your NRMP account and rank these programs on the basis of your preference. Now, just the way that you have ranked the five programs that interviewed you, each program is going to rank all the applicants that they interviewed in the order of their preference. So this whole thing is known as rank order list. So once the applicants and the programs have submitted their rank order lists, there'll be like this algorithm that runs to match people in such a way that it takes into consideration the applicant's preference as well as the program's preference. If you want to know more about this algorithm, I highly recommend checking the video out on the NRMP website because that explains this process extremely well. So go check that out if you if you want to know more about the algorithm. So coming back to where we were, let's just see what all we've done. We bought our ERAS token, submitted our application, took part in interviews, applied for the match, and now we have to just wait. So on the Monday of the second week of March, you will get to know if you have matched or not. So now this is basically the first way in which you can match into a residency program. So this is like the most popular method by which people get matched because most candidates get matched this way. Now, like you can imagine, I am, let's say I'm a candidate who has five preferences and there is a hospital that has interviewed, let's say, 250 students. So we're going to be ranking our preferences, right? So now, since this algorithm sort of matches people based on their preference, there are going to be some candidates that are not going to match into a program and there are going to be some programs that aren't filled completely. So what's going to happen between Monday of match week and Friday of match week is this thing called SOAP. So SOAP stands for Supplementary Offer and Acceptance Program. What's going to happen here is uh, people who haven't matched into a residency program will get access to the list of unfilled programs. So over here, each candidate can apply only to 45 programs. So this is very different from the real match because for the main match, you can apply to how many ever programs you want. But for SOAP, you can apply to a maximum of 45 programs. Now these 45 programs can be of any specialty. Like let's say for the main match, you apply only for internal medicine you can even apply to family medicine or pediatrics or any other specialty that you want based on the vacancies but make sure that you have like letters of recommendation in that particular specialty and your personal statement is customized to that particular specialty but if you're continuing to apply to the same one then it's completely fine you can use the same stuff and if there's some other additional thing that you want to add you can mention that in your personal statement another difference is that applying to these programs it will be free of cost because for the main match if you wanted to apply to programs you will have to pay a particular fee but for soap it's free of cost so it's obviously wise to apply to all 45 programs
So you have sufficient time to apply to all the programs and then the next day programs will get access to all your applications and they can start reviewing it. Now the interviews during SOAP are going to be extremely quick. They won't really schedule a Zoom call or anything. They may just give you like a phone call. So if you're like out of the country, make sure you have a US number. Maybe you can try to like rent a number from Skype or something because it's going to be much more convenient for them to call you if you have a US number. So that's one thing to keep in mind so they're going to be calling and you're going to be having like super quick interviews and that's going to happen on tuesday and on wednesday so now once the interviewing is done now let's say there's a program which has two vacancies for two vacancies they have interviewed six people so now programs are going to like arrange them in the order of their preference and on thursday you will basically have four rounds of soap each round will last about two hours so during round one all the candidates which are on top of the list, like let's say one program, like I said, one program interviewed six candidates for two positions. The top two candidates will receive an offer. So on their NRMP page, they'll be notified saying you have received an offer and you have two hours to accept this. Within two hours, if they accept it, then they have soaked into that program and they will begin residency there. But if they do not accept it within two hours, then the offer is going to expire and it's going to go to the next one on the list. Let's say during the first round of soap a person gets like three different offers he can say yes only to one so by the end of round one if this person has accepted an offer from program a he will be declining program b and c so people below the list in b and c will sort of move up and in the next round of soap they may stand a chance to get an offer so this goes on for four different rounds and by the end of that most of the programs will be filled by soap and many people will also get a position so that's how this whole thing works and this is the second way to match into a program so now even after soap there's a possibility of programs to go unfilled and there is a possibility of candidates not having a position so in such cases what can potentially happen is people can try matching outside the match so if you have not matched for this season please please don't lose hope yet you can still try to match outside the match because the season ends only by the end of may so you still have an opportunity try to reach out to your LOR writers or your mentors or anyone who can help you out or and maybe like put in a good word for you to a program so that they can schedule an interview with you and if they like you, you maybe you can start your residency with them so that's another way in which you can match okay so interesting story what happened is in April 2020 when I did my tele rotation with Dr. Coleman that I'm uh, we rotated with a doctor who had graduated I think like 10 years back or something and I think the only rotation she did was this tele rotation and this was sometime in April. After that, our doctor sort of recommended her application to another program and she had an interview with the program and she ended up starting residency there. So it's all possible. Please don't lose hope. Just put yourself out there and there are going to be opportunities for you. And also there are also new programs that open up. Like just recently there was some program that opened up so they may be looking for candidates and they want their first batch to start this July. So all of these are possibilities of matching outside the match so this is our third way now comes the last and final way now this is known as a pre-match program so now pre-match like i mentioned like we went through the whole match process right of application interviews rank order list and and match day right but what's unique about pre-match programs is that they do not participate in the match uh let's say we have a pre-match program here and they call you for an interview so you get to participate in that interview and, and if they like you within like a day or two they'll offer you a contract so you will have like very little time to like accept or decline that offer and if you accept it you have pre-matched to that program and you don't have to participate in the main match this was like actually pretty interesting because there was a person i remember seeing him on twitter he'd mentioned how he pre-matched into a program sometime in october which was very early and it was wonderful because he didn't have to worry about the rest of the season pre-match can be a little tricky and may be quite a difficult decision because let's say you have eight interviews and one of them is a pre-match interview there's one program that's that's giving you a pre-match offer so now 
if you accept this pre-match offer, you cannot participate in the main match and you have to withdraw from NRMP. So what that means is, although there are eight other programs you have interviewed at and maybe there are programs that you liked more than this pre-match program, then you have to withdraw from the match and that possibility is gone and you will have to start your residency at this program that offered you a pre-match. Some people think of it as a safe offer because you never know what's going to happen on match day, right? Like although there are people who've like gotten like 12 plus interviews and still not matched. So it's kind of uncertain. So people are like, let me just go with the pre-match even though it's not my top choice. It's fine. At least I'm matching. But there are some people who may feel this pre-match program may not be a good fit for me. So they decline the pre-match offer and they choose to go with the main match. So if you decline a pre-match offer, the next person on the list will be given a pre-match offer by the program. So that's how that works. An easy way to find out if a program is pre-match or not is by checking on ERAS and also by checking on Frida. If you see that the program does not have an NRMP code or you filter them on the basis of does not participate in NRMP, that means that they are highly likely to be a pre-match program download my app your med space because we have like this match 2023 group out there you can get to know co-applicants and ask all your questions on that group and and maybe we could find a way in which i can help you all review personal statements and stuff like that so don't hesitate to download the app now and join our match 2023 group all the information is in the description so check that out and if you have any questions please leave them in the comments down below i will try to get back to them as soon as possible and in future videos but if you feel you want like my committed time to speak with you one-on-one, -on -one, I'd be very happy to do that as well. You can check the link in the description to see how you can schedule that. So that's about it for this video. If you liked it and want me to continue making such videos, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.